Well, my story, oh my God, wait, we have to go over this again. <laughs> Hi, my name is Jill. My name is Gabria. Julian Asuncion. Rashanti. My name is Victoria. Hi, my name is Ilioni. Hi, my name is Laudi. Hello, is Jane. Hi, my name is Cameron. Hannah. My name is Sierra. Have you ever struggled with accepting your body and what's your story? Yeah, since pretty much day one. It was always, you're too dark, you're too tall, you're too skinny. Being so small, I've struggled with things, being called like a boy. Fast forward a few years, you know, now, you know, thick is in. So I really struggled with wanting to eat more now and like fit this new beauty standard. Be skinny in a thick world, Kim. It's kind of hard. Yeah. I've struggled in the past with a body image before. I went through a lot of different versions of how I wanted myself to look. I think it was about a year and a half where I started struggling with just waking up immediately having the need to step on the scale. I had already been noticing that I was gaining weight and I was at Thanksgiving and my grandma just goes, I know, like you're getting big. And I was like, I really realized that someone thought that there was something wrong with my body probably around my freshman year of high school there was a boy that i really really liked and uh he used to tell me that i was fat and i was overweight and that i needed to eat more salads and he would take my food and tell me like oh i'm doing you a favor like you don't want to look like that obviously it's so hard for me because i take pictures of these beautiful skinny girls all the time and then looking at their pictures and they're like Oh my god, I'm so fat. And I'm like, whoa, if you think you fat, then what do you think of me? Once I got out of high school around my senior year, that's when I started getting obsessed with the gym. So I just wanted a really big butt and I was doing boutique modeling at that point. So a lot of these girls were basically like shaped like fashion over models. I did get a more hourglass shape than what I had now. But even so, like I still had companies telling me like, hey, you should get a boot job or um, you need to put on more weight and your butt needs to get bigger. And so then I shifted from what I had in high school to overeating. And at that point, I was consuming almost 3,000 calories a day. I would literally cry if I didn't go to the gym. What do you personally classify as an eating or body acceptance disorder? Hmm. Extreme control over what you really can and can't eat. Binge eating or not eating anorexia and bulimia an eating disorder isn't always someone who is anorexic a lot of times people don't realize like stress eating is a really big thing looking in the mirror and like seeing everything wrong with like your appearance have you yourself personally ever struggled with an eating disorder or body acceptance i actually suffered with anorexia I got to a point where i started binge eating and just kind of nitpicking about my body i wanted to have control over my body i felt like that was the only way i had it at one point i thought in my life that i was very overweight and i didn't like that about myself so i did in fact change it but the worst part with that was body dysmorphia. I don't know if you can get diagnosed with body dysmorphia, but I feel like I definitely have it. My mental perception of myself was so skewed and I was never happy, it was never enough. I know you've touched on that on your social media before, but it is so real. And everyone's like taking a picture of me and they're like, this is what you look like. And in my head, I'm like, I don't think that I look like that. No one ever knows how they actually really look. Like sometimes I'll be like, oh, I feel really toned today. And then the next day I'll be like, oh my God, I'm so fat, but I look exactly the same. How would you describe society's current ideal body type? Hourglass. Pretty much Fashion Nova. Fashion Nova. Fashion Nova model. The perfect way to explain it would be Fashion Nova model. It's just unrealistic standards. Like people don't look like this. Slim thick. Big like everything. Yeah, big boobs, tiny waist. Your, your, your stomach is on flat, flat, and your ass is on fat, fat, just like Drake said. And I'm not one of those. I know that for sure because I ain't got no ass. You know, I see all the time like we're labeling it body positivity, but we've just moved from under eating to overeating. Like it's just a whole new version. Yeah. And it's, it's just the way that no one actually like looks like no. the, these body standards. For me to look like that would mean just plastic surgery. Do you ever feel that you've reached society's ideal body type? And if you have, were you happy? never reached that ideal body type. My stomach was never flawed enough and my butt was never big enough. I don't think I would reach that. People come up to me and they're like, oh, you're you're getting thicker and you look so good and this and that. I'm like, I mean, I guess, but like. Yeah, so, so you would say like, 
to them, they feel like you're fitting that standard, but you don't feel like Yeah, I don't. I was constantly praised for how nice my body was, how tiny my waist was, how wide my hips were. But I wasn't happy. I was so unhappy with myself. I can't even express to you how unhappy I was. Well, I'm actually going to the gym right now to like get more leg and more butt. Playing off of that, would you say that you're now in the gym trying to achieve you know the bigger butt and bigger legs because of social media mm -hmm. even though i had reached the body standard that everyone wanted i wasn't happy and even everyone wasn't happy with me they wanted more what would you describe your current relationship with food like my current relationship with food is actually at its all-time best i've always struggled with food i was eating so much that i was literally feeling sick yeah. i'm trying i was looking up things like a pita man. i know from where i started to now great improvement very proud of myself it's really a roller coaster a journey it's it's an ongoing growing relationship with food it's getting better sometimes i'm like i don't care like i'm gonna eat what i want right now and then sometimes I'm like, come on, like, just eat this plain salad. Do you ever have periods where, like, you eat something and you're like, oh my god, I feel horrible that I ate that? Oh, or... that's every day. <laughs> <laughs> I constantly, like, look at the label. I'm like, okay, if I eat this, then I'll be under my calorie deficit. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, if I just eat four of these or two and a half. Yes. It's like, is this my lifestyle where I can't enjoy what I want to eat. So I just want to find that medium to where, you know, I eat, but at the same time, I'm not constantly looking at my stomach. How do you feel social media impacts your relationship with your body? Social media was a big part of why I had issues with my body. That's one thing that I'm always like, oh, my hip dips, oh, I want to get rid of them, but I'm like, they're not Isn't going it anywhere. funny that, like, before social media, almost none of us, like, no, knew yeah, what like, I didn't even didn't know even what that word them. meant at all. I didn't even care about them. I didn't even know what, like, it was, like, a bad thing to have. I just deleted my social media. <laughs> <laughs> I always find myself wanting to delete social media. You see all these girls, and they look so skinny, and you see... All these guys liking their pics and whatever. For me, it used to be really bad because I would follow all of those people that had fake bodies. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, why don't we look like that? I think a lot of what is shown is not necessarily real. And when you see it, you think it's real. So it makes you feel like what you're doing or what your body looks like is not ideal. I cannot look at them because when I look at them, I get sad. And I don't like that. I don't want to do that. I'm always just comparing myself to other people. I used to save pictures on Pinterest and be like, I want my body to look like this. I want my body to look like this. If I don't look like her, I won't be attractive. No one will find me attractive. Do you find that you're working out to be healthy or to look great? Or if you're not working out, would you work out to be healthy or to look great? I'm going through a very good change within myself. So this is actually the first time going into the gym just trying to be healthier. Prior to this, if you would have asked me a few months ago why I was going to the gym, I was trying to get slim thick. I think moving in, actually, I really wanted to lean out. But then I start getting scared, like, what if I look too lean, then I won't have an ass, and then I, my legs will look too small. My mom would call me going to gym, yeah, I'm trying to get slim thick. Like, that was my, you know, ideal goal. Every day is a leg day, every day I do core, so, you know, I can't pre sit here and pretend that I'm solely doing it for fitness. If you work out to be healthy, you will look great. And when you go in for, for one aesthetic purpose, you most likely are not going to reach that aesthetic and you're mm -hmm. discouraged and you're just going to stop. Yeah, th that's what was happening. That's the reason I also kept stopping. Nowadays, especially with the fitness industry being so prevalent, especially around social media, so many girls do want to go in the gym, but sometimes it can be a little bit excessive. I yeah. think there's just too much pressure on our format of working out now Thank as you. women. I'm glad to hear that you run because... <laughs> a lot of girls that are like i, I don't do any cardio no, Cameron, you're the one who inspired me to like start running again Good. instead I'm of just so like happy. not doing it you know i just skip cardio it. all the time and then i'm like why am i out of breath going up the yes, stairs like that's no, bitch. <laughs> we can't like the whole point <laughs> your ass looks nice going up the stairs but you can't breathe <laughs> would you say like you usually speak kindly to yourself or negative there are some days where I'm like, I'm the baddest bitch. Like, can I curse? <laughs> yeah, yeah. After like a meal, like like I said before, I'm like, wow, like you ain't shit. There are moments where I've been like, man, maybe I should get a boob job or something. <laughs> Had you asked me a week ago, I would say I'm speaking negatively to myself. But since I became more aware and what I put out into the universe, I feel comes back. I started speaking positively towards myself. If your friend was going through the same situation as you, 
or a situation worse, what word of advice would you give them? I wouldn't even know what to say. Unstick those stigmas that people have put on you or those ideas of what people have given you which don't really fit who you are. Do everything slow. Weight is just a number and it looks different on everybody's body. Do anything and everything that you want to do for yourself. Catch that on the sweater next year. <laughs> if there was one thing you could change about societal pressures on women with their bodies, what would it be? I think it's just having that perfect body. Say that there's this idea that there's only two kinds of good-looking bodies in this world. There's either the really, really, really skinny girls or the really, really curvy girls. At the time where all women should be accepted, all bodies should be accepted, you know, and like what the shirt says, healthy is a new thing. Would it be how women think? It would be how men think. Normalize everything. What are three things that you love about your body? Okay. It's easier to talk about the stuff you don't like than right? to talk about It's so easy like. to nitpick. Yes. My skin. Like, the way like it contrasts against like bright colors, that's my favorite thing. I like my bottom portion. I love like my cheekbones. I love my thighs, cause shit, thick thighs, they save lives. <laughs> I love how, lo how long my legs are. Oddly enough, I like my small boobs. I love my legs because they're strong. My strength is in my legs, it's always been that way. I think the third thing that I love about it is that it's mine. I, there's, I'm never getting a different one, so I, I love that it's mine. It's my body. What changes have you made or are going to make to be kinder to yourself and more accepting of your body? I just need to find that balance mm -hmm. and understand that in order for me to find that ideal way, I just need to be happy with myself. Eating healthier. Look at yourself in the mirror more because I used to like avoid mirrors. Mm -hmm. Practicing positive affirmations. I would always wear long sleeves and baggy clothes. I couldn't see anything because I didn't want to see anything. I just started wearing like shorter sleeves and like I would wear like biker shorts instead of sweatpants. I would just catch myself in the mirror and be like, oh, okay. I will go to the mirror to like say the first thing that pops into my head that I actually like about myself. Really pay attention to what I need to eat. I actually just went grocery shopping yesterday and made a commitment to like having three meals a day. What would you be doing differently in terms of the content that you consume? I started following people that like I can relate to in terms of like their body type. Once your feed is filled with people that you admire and content that you enjoy, you know, it'll most definitely make you a happier person. Cause just like in real life, if you're constantly being fed with negativity, that's what is gonna harvest inside of you. Healthy is the new thing. Healthy will always be in style.